Hello. I was reading something Olo sent me the other day, which has stayed with me. It was, God created water for fish, air for birds, and for humans, he gave us his presence. I rather like that. God does give us everything we need to li live human lives, but the real gift which enables us to live full and meaningful lives is himself. And in case we feel we cannot live in his presence, there's too much going on to hold us back, we could add, for humans, he gave us Christ. And it kind of connects with today's lectionary readings for morning prayer, which is a passage from the second chapter of Paul's letters to the Colossians. He writes, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Paul was concerned that these precious new Christians were listening to other teachers who didn't believe in Jesus and were in danger of losing their commitment to Christ. Well, I don't think any of us will be in danger of listening to other teaching, but we can't help at this time but be battered by the news. I try and sit it out because it's true. It's all happening and we should know about it. But it's nothing but the coronavirus and all the death and destruction it's causing and our helplessness in the face of it. We've only got to have a bit of personal worry or pain or frustration as well and that's it. We can plummet down to the dumps. Now actually we know that's not the whole story. We experience the joyous applause of Thursday night clapping, the increased good neighbourliness, the ever-increasing creativeness of how to cope with social isolation, and now all the efforts at money-raising for the NHS, perhaps begun or strengthened by the 99-year-old veteran soldier who got into all our hearts with his resolve, his self-discipline, his perseverance and modesty. There are so many good, creative, loving, and yes, redeeming actions arising from the tragedies that we should be able to sustain a balanced mind about it all. But we can't always have a balanced view without faith in the redeeming power of Christ or without the uplifting presence of Christ in our lives. So what do we do? I think we all know that we have received Jesus Christ as Son of God, our Lord and Saviour. And we've probably been doing all the right things like, in my own case, saying morning prayer each day and Compline each evening. But still, I can feel low spirited and very aware, in my case, of the pain in my knee or in anyone else's case, some worry, pain, suffering that's threatening to overwhelm them. And I don't know about you, but I can't help feeling sometimes everyone else seems so upbeat, so thankful for blessings, so Christian. What's wrong with me? And I hear the words of a former head teacher ringing in my ears. Standing still is not an option. We must always be moving on. Which is what Paul urges us to do. Continue to live in him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith you were taught. Living in Christ is so personal. Outward worship opens the way. Music and hymns might open the way. But in the end, I think we have to pray personally, from the heart, and with all our love to Jesus perhaps from the depth of our emptiness. Something like, Jesus Christ, Son of God, I want to love you with all my heart. Break down my hardness of heart, I pray. 
Let me receive you into my inner self as my saviour. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I do love you as well as I can. And stay still and just love. We may need to pray this every day until the hardness of our hearts is dissolved and the love of Christ is released in our hearts. Then we may truly live in him and he in us. And soon, as we go on loving and know that we're loved back, the loving deepens and we'll begin to be rooted in him, like a tree drawing nourishment from good soil and open to the light and rain. But staying there and enjoying God's peace and love is not actually an option. We need to look outward and forward, asking Jesus what he wants us to do for him each day, how he wants us to be. And that will unfold as we reach out in love to those around us, albeit in isolation. And so we will be built up like a house, going up brick by brick from firm foundations. Psalm 1 put it in this way. Blessed are those whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditate on it day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield fruit in season and whose leaf does not fade, does not wither. And the law of the Lord is first and foremost love. And that is surely how those of us who are housebound and cut off from other people can use this time. If we look back to how our lives used to be, we may feel rather miserable. If we long to go out and meet friends and family, we may well feel discontented. But if we want to build ourselves up in Jesus, then this is the time to do it, when we're free of the old distractions. Yes, fish do need water to breathe in and swim around, and birds do need the space of the air to fly around in, maybe just around the garden, or maybe thousands of miles across the world to warmer countries in the winter. And us? We can survive in the world on our own, and a lot of people do. But to live, really live, as our Creator designed us to do, we need Him around us and within us. And since God knows that we're not capable of living in Him all the time, He gave us Christ, who comes to us if we let Him, who shines in our darknesses if we expose them to Him who takes us into himself to live his resurrected life in love and self-giving. But first, we do have to be aware of him and give him our love. And what better time to become rooted in him than this time of enforced stay-putness? And we're not distancing ourselves from all the suffering caused by the coronavirus or from the intense pressures and fears of those working to save and heal and provide. For Jesus is with and within those people too, and will take us with him to pray in his power for their healing and peace and renewed strength. And somehow, though we will suffer with him as he suffers, we will find ourselves too overflowing with thankfulness, partly for those blessings which arise from the situation, partly for the loveliness of God's spring creation all around us, but mostly just for him at the centre, at our centre, gathering us all together and gently pushing us out, ever moving as we continue to live in him and do our part in trying to build up his kingdom around us. So let's pray. O oh Lord our God, 
we give you thanks and praise that when you created the world, you gave us the gift of yourself to live fully under your blessing and protection. And when we pulled away from you, you gave us the gift of Jesus to bring us back to you. Lord, at this confusing time of being without the company of our friends and families, of our leaders and medical staff struggling to cope with the virus, of so many suffering and dying, we need you more than ever. Help us to keep a balanced view of what is happening and give us the grace to focus on you, to express our love for you and to live in you and not outside of you. We pray especially for those with mental health issues who can only focus on all the suffering. Reach out to them that they may see the whole picture and find times of blessing amid the suffering and hope that cures and vaccinations may be developed. Strengthen us all in the faith of your redeeming power. Uplift us in your loving presence and help us to be rooted and grounded in you and you alone. And Lord, please calm our restlessness and help us to be still and rest in you. Fill us with the knowledge of your love and let us wonder at its beauty. And as you build us up, let us build up others as we speak to them by phone or email. And we do pray for our leaders that you will give them your wisdom to find ways of coping. And we pray for carers, especially now those at care homes. Be with them as they care and grieve and feel their strength draining. And gather to yourself those who wait and lose their loved ones without being able to comfort them. We thank you that you are here in the midst of it all. Help us to pray and to care and to continue to live in you. For you alone are our hope and our refuge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let's say together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and those whom we love now and forever. And squeeze, squeeze to everyone. Amen. <laughs>